Evan spoke about uh, amber, orange, red, green, and teal companies. You know, Kent spoke about uh, the parking lot, which is yellow, green, red, risk, and stuff like that. So I said, uh, it only makes sense if we continue the color theme. My talk today is about another color, pink. Pink, and that's exactly what we're going to do. Now, this talk is not about uh, motivating you all to contribute to open source, no. This talk is not about why people should contribute. This talk is about how I make money from every open source contribution that I do. No, so I'm not going to give uh, information about start a company and open source your code, so financial strategies, models. Hey, I'm dressed like this. I'm a developer, okay? A little bit about me. I started Josh Software 10 years ago. And uh, we've been working predominantly in Ruby and Go, both of which are open source languages, which implies that I owe my livelihood to everything open source. In that time, I got a chance to write a couple of books. But one thing that was always left out was, what are we doing? What are we doing to contribute back? Now, just to get a bit of a profile of people here, how many of y'all are actual developers? How, and how many of y'all are in any sort of leadership role where you're managing a team? The rest, I guess, right? So this talk is not about uh, no, motivate people to contribute to open source, because I tried that. I've been there, I've done that. I tried to tell people, you know, you should contribute, and we forced an open source Friday. I convinced my customers, we are a services-based company. I convinced my customers that, you know what? We will work only four days a week. And Fridays are meant only for open source contribution. And they were all okay with it. It still didn't work out. We had uh, uh, every third Saturday as an open source day. We had meetups, we had hackathons. It works, but only to a certain extent. The bottom line, however, is, do you all know that uh, running is a good exercise? Yeah? Running is a good exercise? So how many of you all actually run? Do you run because you like to, or do you run because you have to? because you like to. What about the others? Do you know running is a good exercise, right? So what stopped you? Don't answer it yet. <laughs> what if uh, you had a choice of something there, like a Fitbit, which tells you, hey, you know what, I did 10,000 steps. Or you're going up to your office, which is on the 10th floor, and you decide, you know what, I'll just take the stairs, because I've done 9,000 steps. And I might just get that 10,000 steps and that you know, the vibration on my Fitbit saying, hey, I can do it. What, uh, what does that actually help us out with? The idea is that what can be measured can always be improved. So how do you measure open source contributions? There is no measure for it. Which is why a lot of us don't end up doing a lot of open source contributions. But now, of course, we are a mixed crowd. You would wonder, why should I do open source contribution? Right? Anyone here and everyone here is somehow or somewhere related to some sort of open source element, open source tools. You're already using it. If you're using an Android phone, you're already an open source user. Very quickly, what keeps open source contributors going? Is it because they get a kick out of it? Is it because they want to build their public profile and be famous? So most cases, however, it's that you don't have a choice. You don't. You got to do it and do it yourself. Now, when you're doing this, you end up contributing back, and it, it helps somebody else. So a simple question is, what has stopped the rest of us? Is it because we don't think we're good enough? Is it because 
I don't really care. It's somebody else who will save the world. How many of us feel we don't have the time? And how many of us are just freaking scared? What will people say? Do you know that there are so many open source contributors in the world who suffer a burnout? There are people who are asking for help. There are people who are saying, hey, I'm an open source contributor. You don't have to be rude to me just because I contribute open source. People are searching. People are searching for answers because they too have a livelihood. People are looking out for it. Now, this is all very good. Still, what if, what if open source was fun? What if open source contribution was competitive, motivating? And most of all, what if there was a reward against it? Now, how many of you all do you think that any sort of incentive can actually push people over the edge? All it took is a Fitbit, which gives you a badge. Oh, till now in your lifetime, you have done this number of steps that it takes for you to walk around the Serengeti. And you're so happy you published that on Facebook? Wow. If that's all what it takes, what is it going to take us to actually get you all to do it? But does that mean I'm expecting everyone to code? No. Coding is not about open source contribution, not just about coding and committing code. It's about everything. It's about uh, doing meetups. How many of you all organize any kind of meetups? How many of you all organize hackathons? How many of you all get involved with answering questions in Stack Overflow? How many of you all write a blog post? How many of you all tweet? All this helps the community. But do you get rewarded for it or do you do it out of passion? Right? Now, how many people can be passionate? Can we get everyone to be passionate? This was a problem that was plaguing us two years ago. So we decided that we've tried all these stunts and let's do something different. Let's figure out how to measure open source. Enter code curiosity. We started a kind of competition inside the office which said, you know what, on a monthly basis, we will give 8,000 rupees to the top open source contributor in our office. Now, I'm sure you all, all agree that 8,000 rupees is not an amount that you will leave your mainstream work and just do open source contribution. But is it such a small and trivial amount that you will just let it go? I saw a few people say, hmm, not bad. That's the idea, to strike the right balance. So we started this. And we got astounding results. People started contributing to open source and I was like, what? All you required was that little bit of incentive? That little bit of a push? Interesting. So now, if people have started contributing to open source, we don't know how to measure it. So we started building an open source algorithm where you sign up and it can automatically track what commits you did, what issues you filed. And for every activity, not just code, if you file an issue in any, any repository, We'll reward you for it. Now, it worked out really well for the first three months. Then we started realizing that as we are humans, we of course want to find out competitive means of winning the prize. So we had people suddenly not contributing for the first 26 days. And suddenly, boom, there's a huge amount of contribution coming in the last four days. Why? Because you're deceiving the others. And like, dude, wait, this is not a winner takes all kind of thing. And that's when we started saying, you know what? Let's reward everyone. Let's put in monthly goals. But uh, everyone has different calibers. So you set your own goal, just like the Fitbit. If you are an avid runner and you're doing 10,000 steps, do that, you'll do it by mistake. But if you're an avid runner, you can set your goal as 25,000 steps. If you are a beginner, you'll set your goals lesser. And if we reward everything, it works. So we built a platform for code curiosity, and we opened it to the community, and we did not expect this astounding result. In less than six months, we had over 700 people sign up. And uh, 
we realized, whoa, there would be something here in it. The biggest problem that plagued a lot of people was, all right, I get it, I get it. All right, stop harping about it. What do I do? As managers and as developers, everyone is plagued with the problem. Even if you propagate and promote open source contribution, the first question, unfortunately, comes from a lot of people saying, hey, all right, I buy it. I like what you say, but how do I start? How do you start? Introduce them to code triage. Pick any language of your choice, any repository of your choice, and do something. Ask them to answer questions on Stack Overflow. It's very, very rewarding and satisfying. And you tell them if you really need a push, because you can now track their activity. Why we started this was because we didn't want to compete with uh, you know, Code Chef or Top Coder and stuff like this, because they are like a winner takes all. We wanted it to be rewarding for everyone. Whether you are a beginner, a student, an intern, a professional, a veteran, it doesn't really matter. Reward everyone and reward everything, whether it's a change to a GitHub readme to a core feature contribution. What is important is that you actually contribute. Now, we had to pick a platform, so we chose GitHub. Now, how many of you all have a GitHub account? Or rather, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, wrong question. How many of you all don't ever have, don't have a GitHub account? Right? It become a de facto standard today. But how many of you all have my test application on GitHub? Right? Oh, come on, everyone has something like that, trying some stunt and trying this. Do you think that is open source contribution? Right? So we wanted people to not just maintain continuity, we also wanted quality. So how do you maintain a continuity? We started keeping a monthly goal. You just get 15 points, and we'll reward you 15 points more. Now what are these points? Points are an automated scoring algorithm which looks at your commits looks at what is called a heat map. For example, if you are committing one line of code in a very commonly committed file, you are touching a hotspot. So you get more points. If you are on the periphery writing the readme, but the readme is edited very often, hotspot. And if you are correcting the indentation of a file, you get lesser points. We also give points based on whether you are a beginner in a difficulty level where you're a veteran making a small minor fix. We're rewarding merge commits, pull request merges because you have to have access. So all these kind of things are happening. But the bottom line is what do these, what do these points actually mean? Points is money. Now, suddenly it changes the balance because every time you have somebody says, hey, I need a break, let me go and play some table tennis or play some pool, there is going to be at least one person who's going to say, hey, you know what? Let me fix that bug in some open source contribution. Now, unknowingly, we have actually motivated people to build their public profile. How many of you all are, uh, are a part of an interview process or screening process? How many times do you actually see what is your GitHub handle? Because a resume is paper. A GitHub profile speaks. Do you agree? And if a GitHub profile speaks, these kind of tools are incidentally getting a person a better profile. So we are building people's profiles. We are telling them what they have done over the months. We are telling them we are measuring this open source contributions of theirs and showing them what you do. But now comes the matter of quality. Do we actually reward people for my test application? So we kept a criteria. If you have any contribution that you're doing to a repository which has more than 25 stars or a forked repository more than 25 stars, we'll consider it. 25 stars is a criteria we kept which says like it's relatively popular. So if I start building something new, honestly, it is not learning. But if I contribute to an existing library, I get to learn a lot because I get to interact with the community. There's somebody who's giving me a code review comment. There's somebody telling me the right approach. Somebody is going to say, you cannot even 
send a pull request if you don't have test cases. So there are a lot of things that can actually impact the way people work. Now when this started happening, people suddenly came up with the question, hey, I've already been doing open source contributions for a long time. What are you going to do about me? We went and we analyzed people's existing GitHub profiles and gave them what we call a royalty bonus. So even though this person is a good friend of mine, has not, in the first month he's just had a few points of going, he still got over 5,000 points, which is actually in turn making, becoming about $600. So he can actually redeem these $600 for a, a GitHub gift card, for Amazon gift cards, or any other merchandise that you want us to procure for you. What happens to repository maintainers today? How many people are actually searching for people to look at their code? And there are open source companies today which want to promote their own repositories. So we built a widget. You can take this widget and actually put it on any site, in any public website and saying, you know what? These are the people who are contributing to my website. And this, by the way, is an actual example. So Stack Weighted Voting is a company which approached us and said, hey, we have a blockchain technology for elections. And we are looking out to reward people to contribute to our repository. If you give us some metrics in which month, who has contributed, how much, we'll give them t-shirts or we'll give reward them any which way we want. And like, great, it works. So people have started doing this. Now, GitHub has become the center of our universe. Do you know the logo for GitHub? What's their tagline? Social coding, right? You know what my dream is? Change it from social coding to social rewarding. Now, it's a dream, right? But uh, hey, I'm an entrepreneur. <laughs> I'm an entrepreneur. So you might be wondering, what is this joker telling us about this? Because uh, I mean, what has, what's the value in this? Where is this going? Have you all seen this movie? It's a pretty interesting movie. I revised the title, right? How to lose your money and be proud of it. That's exactly what we are doing. Let me introduce you the concept of an anti-startup. It's my own term. I don't know what it is. But it means we reward people without any returns. Till date. My company has gone and given, this is as of yesterday's metrics, we have about 759 users on the portal and just under $3,000 which has been rewarded to people. And we're going to continue doing it till as long as we can. Now $3,000 at one shot might seem a sizable amount of money, but if you spread it out over maybe a year or two, it's not much for a company. Especially if you're going to get your company employees or your friends or your colleagues to actually start becoming more proficient in open source contributions. Now, our target this year is to actually reach a lot more users. All this has been done without a single dollar being spent on any kind of marketing. No ads, nothing. The only thing that we've been doing is getting such opportunities to talk about this sort of a different kind of product where we guarantee you that as a company, you lose money for the benefit of the community, right? So we are searching for other jokers like this. We are searching for other companies to come up and see how can we actually change the face of open source contribution and change that ratio from 99.3% of passive contributors to even 99%. Do you know how, how big that difference will be? That will be huge. And we'll automatically raise the standard of open source development without having changed anyone's mindset. That's been the theme of Agile this, this day today, changing the mindset. That's what I intend to do here. We're going to start rewarding Stack Overflow. We're going to start rewarding any kind of conferences, talks, because these things actually matter to people. And when we start moving in this direction, collectively, I have no idea where we'll go, but all I can guarantee is this is going to be fun. 
The last one year has been amazing for us, where we've started getting on a lot of different feedback. Uh, the, the essence of a GitHub repository is when you have like over 30, 40 issues being filed. Hey, what happened here? Hey, I tried this, this didn't work, and it's awesome. We walk the talk. So this entire code base is open source. It's out there. We're looking for people to help. We're looking, for, we're looking to make a change in the way we think, in the way we code. Right? May the source be with you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes. Call me a fool. I know. There's a reason I'm losing my hair. <laughs> no, but it works. It actually does. Ah, so we're a services company. Like I said, when you spend money, people call this spending, I call it investing. Every one of these people automatically knows that there is some sort of contribution happening. Who's facilitated is an excellent marketplace for us to showcase our abilities, but that's the underlying thing. We realize, we genuinely feel that if the overall development standard is increased even by 0.3%, it will make our life easier because people contribute to open source. My livelihood is open source, so it works. And I don't know where it's going. It's been one year. But the direction it's going in, uh, we, are see we don't even know how this will pivot. I don't even know if it will pivot into a business. I have no idea. I just realized one thing. I got the passion to do this. We have the funds today. If we have other companies supporting us, well, let's rope in other people too. Does that answer your question a little bit? Yes, sir. So, so I am I'm searching for ideas for a business model around this because this is one business model which I can guarantee is that you definitely reward people and lose money. You gain credits in kind, but you lose money on this. But there are companies who approached us saying, hey, you know what? I am not in the IT field. Like this is a company which is in uh, uh, waste management. They're in waste management, and they say, you know what? We want to get known. If yours is a directed medium, can you all help us do it? We will pay all some sort of uh, uh, honorarium or a fund so that you can reward people, but uh, can you all help us out? So I haven't thought of an idea about how we can do it. Maybe we send out these mailers every, every month telling you how many points you've got and uh, what more you can do to achieve your goal. Maybe we could put their logo below saying something like that, like kind of passive advertising. Uh, we've also had cases of uh, people coming and saying, we want to reward people. So as part of the reward money which lands, we, every, every dollar which comes to us doesn't always get rewarded because it needs to be redeemed. So that can possibly also be sent, maybe some amount can help in the hosting part. And uh, well, keep your fingers crossed if GitHub wants this or some other company wants it, why not just pick up the entire product? Yes, sir. Absolutely. We have, we are a services based company, sir. Yes. Yes. All right. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.